So I think there's a lot of risk that that people think about when it, it comes to, to changing anything in an organization. But I think if you look at data and in the data, it's telling you a story, right? That clearly there's areas that you need to be focused on that you're not. I think there's more risk in not changing. I mean, you need to definitely be fueling your decision making with data all along the way. And you know what? Most likely it's not all going to be right. And then you can't be afraid to make the change again. I'm Devin Reed. And I'm Sheena Badani. And you're watching Reveal, the revenue intelligence podcast powered by Gong. Keep watching here to see the full interview. Or if you like to listen to podcasts on the go, check out the links in the description below. And if you like what you hear, subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, or all of them. Why not? And while you're there, make sure to leave us a five-star review. We personally read every single one, and I think I speak for both of us when I say they mean the world to us. Could not agree more, Devin. Now, without further ado, here's the episode you've been waiting for. Susan, it's so wonderful to have you on the show today. So welcome to Reveal. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm excited for our conversation today, but just to set the stage a bit, you know, we like to look at the LinkedIn profiles and backgrounds of all of our guests. And I was just personally really impressed at the depth of your experience um, in a revenue function, um, leading a global organization at a well-respected company. So I would love to just hear a little bit about your personal journey and your path to becoming CRO. Yeah, so I have spent my entire career in sales, uh, some variation of sales, whether carrying a bag or now leading a fairly large organization. And, um, you know, my path really came through um, different different companies. I worked for a large company called Polaroid that did not evolve and transform and is really no longer with us. And, and I've been with uh, Varicast uh, for uh, 15 years. So I've spent a lot of my career really just helping teams, you know, be successful and, and transition and, and drive the business forward. So uh, really have a passion for salespeople, have a passion to watch a, a company grow and, uh, you know, really feel honored to have had such a great career, you know, within the revenue world. And, I, you know, I think you were, um, you know, you've been a CRO now twice in your career. And I'm curious how you've seen that, that role of the CRO evolve. Um, has it evolved? And if so, how, how so? Yeah, I, I think um, the role has some different definitions, right, of what a CRO is, right? In some cases, there's organizations where, um, you know, it's a little bit more than just a sales focus or a, a customer focus. Um, within my my journey, I had a I had a, a CRO at, when the company was smaller, um, and just really one one or two divisions of the organization. And now I'm running the former four divisions of the organization. So my role has gone from you know leading a team of about you know 300 to now a team of over a thousand sellers um, within the organization. So it, it's been a fairly rapid evolution over the past couple of years really just due to a lot of dynamics within our company um, as we continue to evolve the Veracast story and the Veracast brand. Um, you know, I've been going on the ride with them and, and taking additional responsibility. So it's been challenging, um, but also really rewarding. And I think particularly challenging, right, with everything we've been dealing with in the past couple of years with the pandemic. So a lot of learnings, a lot of pivoting, and, and a lot of uh, really having to make some really strategic decisions to move the business forward rapidly. So Susan, uh, as you probably you know already know, we're big data advocates, uh, data nerds. If you're Sheena, uh, so but we would love to hear from you. You know why is is data so critical in the way that you lead and conduct business as a CRO? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And um, you know when you think about it, I really think about it in three different buckets, right? So the the first bucket is kind of what I call our internal data. Right. And that's everything that has to do with what are our customers buying from us? How much are they buying from us? What kind of metrics are we watching from a sales 
perspective, you know, what is the pipeline build? What is our close ratio? All those normal things you do, you know, when you're looking at um, a sales team and their metrics. And then even, you know, with our products, you know, what's what new products, how are they, you know, ramping up? Are they meeting the plan we put out there? So that's kind of the, the internal focus. The external focus is, you know, what's happening with our customers, right? We have over, Baracast has over 15,000 customers across many different verticals, restaurant, retail, healthcare, consumer products, grocery. And, you know, what's going on in their world? Are they launching new products? Are they opening new stores? Are they transitioning their e-commerce site, right? Um, do they have new leadership? So what's going on with them, you know, that we need to be able to lean in and help them and, and use our solutions? And then finally, you know, what's going on in the external marketplace, in the economy with businesses, right? Uh, we've seen particularly in the past two years, so many rapid iterations of businesses having to react to different things going on with the pandemic. You know, there's supply chain issues, there's labor issues. So they're the type of data points that, you know, we like to dig into to really have a full approach to, to how we attack and go to market with our business. So I, I think it's really that triangulation, there's, there's three points that really help have a full picture and not just an internal picture of how, you know, we should be using data to inform us to make decisions. That totally totally makes sense, and I think you know the first time someone's delineated that internal versus external focus, which was which was interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious. I have a hunch the answer is both, but I'm going to ask anyway. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of what you just shared. You know, I, I imagine, or I'm curious, like when you're looking at, I'm just calling it dashboards data. Do you lean more towards like, hey, I have a specific question that I'm trying to get answered, right? And I'm looking at the data to see what it can tell me. Or sometimes are you looking at the data to see what questions you should be asking and kind of sparking some some thought that way? Oh, I love that question. Um, I, I think I would lean towards the latter. You know, I, I have... I, I try to really push myself in my leadership position to have a lot of curiosity and and to ask a lot of questions when we see certain things. So, um, you know, if I suddenly see, say, a dip in our metrics on sales activity, right, or um, our, our RFPs or something like that, um, I, I that that will spark some questions for me to kind of dig in and say, you know, what's going on here? Um, you know, asking the leadership team, maybe even picking up a call, uh, the phone and asking a seller just to make sure that we can have um, some real time information about what's going on and how we react. Do we need to, you know, give some more support in some ways to drive some additional, you know, leads or, you know, do what does is that seller not, you know, not getting some of the help that they need. So we use that look at those to, to kind of ask the questions of what does that mean? I, I think that data, you know, it, it can be skewed, right? You can, you use data, if you look at it as fresh as form, right? But we all use data to tell a story. And so I think it's really important to kind of take a step back and make sure that you're not putting your bias or your thoughts into that data and really asking some key questions as to what that could actually mean. So funny you say that we have a, a monthly revenue metrics meeting uh, and I coach a team on putting their slides together. And I always tell them there's a story you can tell uh, very easily. Like, you know, you can find a data point to kind of tell any story you want, right. but make sure you're telling the full story and learning from it versus like your point of, you know, it's easy to pull the one stat that makes you look really good or the, hey, I'm running this initiative. So I'm going to point these two stats, but I'm going to leave these other out of the way because, you know, that muddies up the picture a little bit. So uh, I can definitely, definitely appreciate that. Yeah, we, we use a, a KPI dashboard, which I think is pretty interesting in the sense that not just looking at revenue, right, as, as a data point, but, you know, as we built the plan for 22, you know, we have, you know, revenue goals on different pieces of, of the plan. And those revenue goals aren't always just about sales executing, right? Mm -hmm. They're about making sure our cross-functional partners, whether it's a product coming out on time, it's our sales enablement team being able to train up, right? All of that, all everything everybody does across the organization does feed into whether we can hit those revenue goals. So, so when we look right. at those KPIs, we look at it from where who's supposed to deliver and how are they, you know, being able to, to, to deliver on time and things like that. So we have a real broad view, even though they're re revenue initiatives, 
they're really broadly based across the organization. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, oh, Sheena, were you about to ask a question? No, go ahead. Okay, I always I watch for Sheena if her mouth opens because I'm really good <laughs> at talking over her in the digital realm. Um, <clears throat> what, one of my favorite questions to ask, Susan, and it might take you a second because it's, it's it's not scripted, but I'm always curious, like, as you're looking through data, has there ever been like a really surprising finding or something that just kind of shocked you uh, maybe over the last year or two to, to kind of consolidate all of your experience? Wow. Wow. Um... Let me think. I would say um, it would be something along the lines of, you know, we have, this would be more of an external data point, but uh, we have a lot of grocery customers, right, that, that work with us. And, um, you know, when the pandemic first happened, you know, they were one of the first of our customers to kind of pull back right? In the sense that um, they suddenly couldn't get supplies. There was all this concern about people going in stores, right? That all, all these issues. And when um, I think the data point that shocked me was two things. Like, first of all, they quickly pulled back, like cutting back, you know, a significant amount of what they were doing. But they quickly saw, we quickly saw that that data point turned around rapidly because uh, what we provide for them, you know, their, their circulars, their digital advertising and things like that, they needed to continue to be communicating to their, their customers and that they had to turn it on very quickly. Where, um, you know, just kind of seeing how their sales, you know, came down quickly. They didn't have, they had people coming in stores, not, not understanding what their, their um, hours were and things like that, how, you know, effective our, our solutions were in really for them to be in front of their customers. They also had, you know, issues with, you know, some of their customers switching, you know, switching brands. And, and so there was just this rapid increase again of making sure they were, you know, again, using our product and services very quickly because it hurt their business as well. We've, uh, you've painted a really nice picture of how you use data as an organization to give you kind of the status quo. What's happening? What's going on with my customers? What's going on with my teams? What's going on in the market? Maybe you could talk about kind of the next step from there. How are you using data as a CRO to actually make decisions and implement things within the organization? Yeah. So one of the things that um, as I've led the or revenue organizations, um, I tend to lean into is uh I believe in constantly kind of evolving the organization, right? That the status quo is not necessarily the best thing. And, you know, in order to be able to evolve or, or realign our go-to-market strategy or realign how our sales team is, is going to market, um, I think you really need to use data to inform that initial de decision point, right? So for example, we just went through an evolution of the sales team and really it's part of the, the company at the uh, end of 2021. And I uh, used uh, um, some of our data to, to really start to develop the business cases to why should we do this, right? Because change can be disruptive, people don't like change and, and you know it, it can be perceived as being negative where I think it can be very positive for the organization. Our business isn't changing. I mean, businesses aren't staying the same. Customers aren't staying the same. How can we stay the same, right? Um, so what, what, one of the things that we did was we took a look at, um, you know, you've had pre-pandemic world and then you have post-pandemic world. And we have about 15,000 customers at Veracast. Um, and we took a look at the, the customers and we said, okay, so what has happened in 2021 with what are they buying from us? How much are they buying? Are they buying more products, less products, things like that? And then what do we think is going to happen? What are we going to forecast for 22 that we think is going to happen with these customers? We looked at the data and then we started to bucket the data and we said, okay, some customers are, are kind of what I, I call we want to bear hug. They're, they're going to be maintained customers. They're perhaps not going to grow with us. There's customers that are growing. There's verticals that are doing better than other verticals. And by the way, there's some new opportunities and new categories emerging. So once you take a look at that, you take a step back and say, okay, how does this data kind of help inform us for a strategy, a go-to-market strategy? And, and the way that um, 
I looked at that was, you know, again, where do we kind of double down and, and defend and protect the business? And where do we really lean in to, to grow? And, and it even would happen at uh, the seller level. Is that seller really a seller that's better at kind of that relationship selling? Or is that seller really better at leaning in with our analytics and our intelligence and having those really high-end sophisticated solutions, you know, type of conversations? So what ended up happening is we used all those types of information to really inform and realign how we would go to market. And we launched that, you know, in December of 2020. 20, of 21. So we're in the middle of, of uh, you know, implementing that right now. Um, and, uh, you know, initial indications are, you know, we're off to a good start. I can understand like the mixed feelings within the organization when there's any kind of change. And um, of course, there's massive change in the world overall. And then there's additional change within the organization. So I'm curious how you communicated that to the team. How was it received uh, and you know, how do you keep folks focused on that positive side of things that you talked about earlier? Yeah, I think there's a, a real kind of formula and playbook to being able to take an organization through any kind of change. And that playbook is really about bringing people with you and also letting them have a part of be a part of the conversation. And, and so what I mean is, you know, as I talked about all that data that we used, right, to kind of look at the business and know where we should and shouldn't be, um, we, I also opened it up to many levels of leaders within the organization as well as cross-functional teams to get together and talk about what was this business case telling us. And, and having a lot of input into really where we should, how and where we should align. And, and having that kind of full circle of people involved in understanding the data, what is the story telling us, how should we react, you end up having them turn and, and go and run with, with where we're going, right? Take the lead for me and, and get their teams aligned to what the vision and the strategy is as we move forward. And I have an example of that that we did a couple of years ago. Um, we had went through an evolution where we brought print and digital together under one team. They were separate, separate divisions at the time. And, you know, in a room with sales leaders kind of realigning, how are we going to uh, put this person here or that person there? Why should we do it? And, and I got a phone call and I had to leave the room. And I came back in the room and there was a, a leader that was very opposed to what we were trying to do. And I stood in the back of the room and heard all the other leaders, you know, convince them, that person, and give them the case for change. And I didn't have to say a word. So I think that's when you really know that you've got everybody leaning in. And, um, you know, one of the other things is I always tell people there's only a certain amount of ways you can reorganize or or you can, you know, evolve a company. So what's old is new again and with a twist, right? We kind of always keep certain things or certain things come back, but you just have that nuance that makes it fresh and has a better perspective as to what's going on in the business. So I just encourage, you know, leaders to to be curious, to lean in and, and really understand their teams have a lot of great information that can really make that change not only happen with a more agreement, but be better, be more powerful, be more informed. So I, I, th I think that's something that's really worked and um, it continues to work even with this current uh, you know, alignment that we've done. Susan, I think I have to steal that play, which is uh, next time I'm in the midst of, of change, just pretending I have a phone call and leaving. <laughs> and if I come back and I have consensus, I'm in a good place. Or maybe I come back and it's like, the, you know, the, the, the groups are even more separated and now it's like 50-50 versus 80 Yeah, 20. you never know. I, th that was truly an amazing moment to me. I was like, wow, that's right. You want to be in a sales call and you want a customer to be the, uh, the, the person, the customers to be selling each other once you're done. You kind of sit back and they're like, yeah, we should do this. Yeah, we should do this because of this. And yeah. you just sit back and say, all right, I'm done. Right? Same <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's such a funny, uh, such a nuanced sales scenario, which is true, which is like, uh, at least for me, selling mostly over Zoom, even before the pandemic was like, I think I should just go on mute right now and say nothing because everyone else is, you know, people are doing the, con you know, the, the conversations you usually don't hear because they're behind closed doors. You're a fly on the wall. So it's like, okay, I'm just going to let, let you guys duke it out and hopefully it swings my way. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. 
Cool. I'm curious too, is like if you've ever, I know that obviously kind of half joking, but clearly if effective in that scenario, if there's other ways where maybe you, you lean on data um, to get that buy-in, right? So maybe, maybe, you know, same, same ish scenario, but not leaving for a phone call, like having a couple people like, you know, Susan, I just, I just don't see it, right? Like, I don't think this is going to work. Is there any like times or like, is there data that you rely on? Is there kind of like, like you said, a framework maybe where like, hey, here's the type of data points I show to kind of get people to see the uh, the other perspective? Yeah, well, I think when whenever, you know, we, when business is going well, right, there's like, nobody digs into the data quite as, as much as you normally would, right? Like, sure. oh, things are going good. Okay. You know, I yeah. think when you see, you know, a blip is when the data becomes really you know, dialed in and, and you really are focused in on what is that data telling you. And that could be, you know, something like, um, you know, where we launch a new solution or a new product and, you know, we have these expectations of this is how it's going to take off and this is the revenue it's going to drive and things like that. I always say it, it's what it's always takes longer than we think. <laughs> I mean, it just, it just does because there's a lot of aspects to getting that, that done. Um, and I think when, you know, taking a look at, you know, what is, what is happening, you know, digging that into that product, you know, using dashboards, you know, or how many times has something been presented? How many times have we RFP'd it? Is that, what is, uh, our, our, if we're losing, you know, who are we losing to? What capabilities do they possibly have and we not possibly have? So using um, like the data, the dashboards to kind of say, okay, this is what's going on. Again, you know, broad base, but what is that telling us? Asking those questions Devin, that you talked about earlier about what is that really telling us? Are we not launching this as quickly because there's things going on and we haven't asked the questions, but the data is kind of pointing out that there might be some things we need to address in order to get something moving more quickly. So I really like, it seems like the route to transformation and to change, a lot of it is at the heart of it is the data. Right. And then there's other aspects, right? And you can, it's not the data alone. Like there's no possible way that's the case. It's the um, analytical skills and the critical thinking that you bring to that. It's also the, the people and collaborating, getting that buy-in, building those champions internally. Um, and even part of, you know, part of it is storytelling. Maybe like a lot of that, the people and the storytelling is the art of how you can help drive some of this change. But I think for some companies, it's still it's still hard. It's really, really hard to drive change in established organizations. What do you think makes it tough uh, for some of these companies? Well, I think there's always risk, right? I mean, you know, there there's comfort in um, the status quo. We know what's going on. We know how it's working. We know what questions they ask with the data. It's the same data we always look at, right? Like, I mean, it's the same go-to-market strategy. People are in the same position. We we don't want to we don't want to make a move because people might not might not like it and then you create you know unhappiness within your your sales teams and or with your people and and nobody wants that right you want a good positive culture so I think there's a lot of risk that that people think about when it, it comes to to changing anything in an organization and and that's I'm talking about you know a, a go to market strategy but it could even be as small as you know. Uh, you know, how you launched a product and you decide to change a product, right? Or, or something like that. But I think if you look at data and in the data, it's telling you a story, right? That clearly there's areas that you need to be focused on that you're not or areas that you um, shouldn't be focused on. You know, they're like maybe that business isn't there anymore. Or maybe that business isn't worth investing in anymore. And if, and if you don't take the time to step back and take a look at all of those things, and, and there's so many pieces of data, you know, that you, you can have on any given day, I think there's more risk in not changing. I mean, when you look at companies that, that don't change, right, a lot of times they're not here. <laughs> you know, they end up not, they end up not existing. And, um, you know, I think that, that that becomes really more of a risk. I think a lot of it is... You need to calculate how much of a change are you willing to make. You need to look at both sides of it, right? What's the benefits? What's the risks? You need to definitely be fueling your decision-making with data all along the way and making sure you're double-checking, not only with yourself or with the leadership team, but as I told, with, with cross-functional partners, um, to make the best decisions you can make. 
And you know what? Most likely it's not all going to be right. And then you can't be afraid to make the change again. You can't be afraid to get halfway down. You know, three, if we, if three months from now with our sales organization, if we decide something's missing in the go to the market strategy, you can't hesitate to say, well, we made that decision. You know, you've got to say, Hey, we've got to make some changes because it doesn't, doesn't help. So, um, I, I think, it, I think it's really takes some experience, right. And, and, and being able to do it. And I would say that you need to look at what's the risk and not to convince yourself why you need to make the change. Um, you know, with the change, it's it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. You're talking about the status quo. It's easy to stay in the status quo, but it's hard to evolve and change and and do something differently. I'm curious how you personally handle some of that, um, you know, uncomfort and being in a place where where there's unknown. Um, how do you feel confident in the decisions that you're making and that you're recommending for a company? Yeah, that, that, you know, I sometimes ask myself, <laughs> like, am I sure? <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I, um, knowing the business really well, like I do, right, I've had a lot of experience in the business. Um, again, um, making sure I have all the information I need. Um, and then sounding, a lot of sounding boards, making sure that's not done just in my head or in a silo. Um, getting a lot of feedback, being very open to that feedback, um, listening. And, uh, you know, once you, when you do that kind of what I call like a 360, 365 kind of view of, of your decision-making process, right? Checking all those points, taking your ego out of it, right? Taking the fact that, well, this is my thoughts, my plans out of it. And really, really, I, I find it, I love listening to people's opinions of things. I think I learn. It's so interesting to me to, to see how people think and, and come to conclusions um, and, and not feeling like, you know, that letting that ego get in the way. I think that that really cre creates a healthy environment that most likely um, you're going to make the best decision. Now, things can change, right? Like, we were headed down one path prior to pandemic, and then we had to change the whole thing. But, um, you know, and then that's a whole different ballgame in decision making, right? Decision making kind of in a crisis situation. But when you have time to sit back and really plan and really think about it, you just need to be very thoughtful and, and, and very pragmatic, you know, in your approach. Emotion out. What's the facts? What are we trying to do? What's the strategy? What's the angle? And what are all the pieces that I need to put in place to get there? And again, making sure the whole team is aligned every step of the way, because nobody wants to be hit over the head. Oh, by the way, we're now doing this. If people understand what the journey is and where we're trying to go, it's just much easier for people to, to handle change. When uh, discussing change, sometimes we see, you know, what if, what if we make this change and it fails? And my reply sometimes is, what if we don't make the change and we become blockbuster? <laughs> right. No, no one well, in, you know, in my in my history, I worked for uh, Polaroid and it was a company yeah. that could not evolve and change and it died, you know, so it's definitely something it might be one of the reasons why I tend to lean into changes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I was not high level in the organization, but I remember sitting there thinking, what are they thinking? You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's super interesting. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, to head towards wrap up here, uh, Susan, I've got a question for you, uh, but really for our audience. Um, what advice would you give to CROs who are planning their next big strategic initiative? Yeah, well, I think I've said a lot of it, right? So maybe I'll, I'll sum it up. Um, first of all, make sure you have the, the data and the facts and the business case, right? Really understand that it's rooted in you know, in, in facts and data, again, the pure data and not the story you want to tell with that data. You can tell the story once you figure out where you're going, but you need to look at the data. Um, the second thing would be to absolutely be very inclusive, you know, in the decision-making process. I'll, I'll, aside from with the executive team or the, the senior leadership team, you know, making sure that you are going into the, into the organization to understand you know, at the, the, the customer level, like what is this impact on customers, you know, salespeople involved in things, getting input as well as cross-functionally, right? Because just because we make a change to a sales organization, there's implications about that change across the team. And then you need to be really clear. What is the strategy? 
what are the, what is the path we're going to get there? What are the, the, the steps to make that strategy come alive? And oh, by the way, if something's not right, guarantee, let everybody know that you'll fix it. And, and I think the, that, that sounds pretty simplistic. There's a lot to unpack there. But I think those types of, 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 you know, just kind of playbooks in a way really will help CROs get there. And again, you know, understanding what's the risk, you know, as you know, to not change. Right. And I think you need to weigh it all in. That's great, great advice from somebody who's been through significant change um, and, and multiple different companies. So thanks, Susan, for that. Yes. So we're, we're heading into the wrap up now. We ask all of our guests one final question and really look forward to hearing your response to how would you describe sales in one word? Belief. Ooh. I like it. I love it. I think it's the first time we've had, had belief as a descriptor. I think so. For the first 20 episodes, I was really good at knowing if anyone repeated. We're at like 120 yeah. now. So I, <laughs> but I think belief did spark like new. You know, we've heard a few a few times over, yeah. which is totally fine. But uh, I like that a lot. I like that a lot, uh, Susan. Belief belief in your team, if, uh, if I'm taking... Uh, Taking notes from today's session, belief in the data, yeah. uh, and belief in the uh, decision-making process that you shared. So, I like it. I had a great time with you, Susan. Thanks for stopping by the show and sharing your knowledge and wisdom and experience with us. Well, thanks for having me. It was really great. So, I appreciate it. Woo.